Oh, I should be live. Let me know if you can hear me, guys. Okay. I'm going to bring up to speed on the uh, the issues surrounding live streaming in a minute, as soon as you give me some feedback. But according to this, I am live. So, welcome, welcome, welcome to this live stream. We in, in this live stream, we are talking about the new lower 90mm macro lens for mirrorless cameras, which I have had in my possession now for quite a while. Oh, let me put my teeth in. Bear with me. That's better. <laughs> so, right, so uh, no guest. Let me just get on to, uh, before we start talking about that, let me just go on to this whole thing about the streaming on this computer that is just, um, oh God, it's just doing my head in. Um, it's actually been restarting while recording my EVF now, not just when live streaming. So it might be something to do with the software. I don't know. But if the live stream does cut off, then um, just you know, refresh the page and I'll get back on as soon as I can. So first one, I, I want to uh, I want to thank uh, Bug Bob. He, uh, he's, he's bought me a coffee on buy me a coffee. So thank you very much. It's appreciated. And now that I have the whole this could cut off at any time out of the way. Let's talk about these uh, these lenses here. Yeah. So, as you already know, Laura has a new um, macro lens. Out. It's the 90 millimeter f 2.8 two times ultra macro lens. It's an APO lens. If you have any questions at all about this new lens, let me know in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Now, I've had this lens, which is just here. I've had this in my possession for um, quite a few months, about three months or so. I've had this lens. This is what I've um, been itching to try and tell you about because this lens is an absolutely fantastic lens. It's got its flaws, as most lenses do, but I do absolutely love that lens. So, um, yeah, let's let's deal with all the... I'm getting a lot of questions. Um, off the stream about the difference between the 100 mil and the 90 mil. Okay, so I'll try and answer them to the best of my ability. Okay, the 100 mil was designed for DSLR cameras. Okay, the 90 mil is designed for mirrorless cameras. Now, Lara did bring out a 100 mil lens for mirrorless cameras, but all they did is just extend the bottom of it to make it fit onto a mirrorless camera which is the flange distance so basically you could take uh, your adapter pop it onto there that's basically what they did they put an adapter on the end of it so it's not a true mirrorless lens it's an adapted lens whereas the 90 millimeter is designed for mirrorless cameras and takes advantage of the advantages that you get with mirrorless cameras now that being said if you already have the 100 mil then unless well let me just say, uh, when it comes to the, the quality images, there's hardly any difference. I don't think you're going to tell any difference with the the extra 10 millimeter between them. They both weigh about the same. They're practically almost the same size, if you look here. Everyone's going on about how small smaller it is, but in reality, it's maybe half an inch smaller. So you're not really gaining a lot when it comes to the weight they're about the same. I must get. I was actually. I'll weigh them in a minute. They're about the same. About the same build quality. I'll get onto that in a minute. Um, so if you already have the 100 mil, I can't see the point in you upgrading to the 90 mil unless the end of this irritates the crap out of you, like it does with me. I mean, <laughs> it just irritates me. It really does irritate me. Um, so yeah, if you've already got the 100 mil then I can't see the point in upgrading. However, if you haven't got the 100 mil and you're looking at buying a lower lens, that's two times. If you are on uh, the mirrorless system, so that's Canon RF, Nikon Z, Sony EF, is it, or FE, FE and the uh, L mount, then I would definitely purchase the 90 mil over the 100 mil because you're not losing anything. It's the same quality, the same um, magnification but you are getting this solid front end on the front of this one so that your adapters aren't getting stuck onto that goddamn UV filter. 
Right, let's have a look. Here we go to questions. Uh, right, uh, drawbacks for the 100 mil on an RF. If you have the EF version like I have, there is no drawbacks because you've got auto aperture. However, if if you're looking at buying a full manual 100 mil lens and you're on mirrorless, definitely go for the 100 mil. If you already have the the 100 mil uh, in an RF format, for instance, there's there's no point in changing because you won't really won't notice any difference. And the 100 mil is a great performer. Let's not let's not forget that it is an absolutely fantastic performer. Right. Um, would I suggest this lens over the Canon MPE 2.8? I've got the Canon up here. So this is the uh, Canon. It's the holy grail of macro lenses, this thing is. Um, I think the combination of both of those will make a, a great combination. I would start with the 90mm and then get the MPE afterwards because the um, the 90mm goes to two times. And there's not so many occasions I have to go above two times. Uh, I'll do three times magnification in the field on my camera. Rarely do I go above three times, particularly even with this lens. This lens I mostly use for studio work. So personally, if you haven't got either one of them, I'd go for the lower first. It's a great run and gun lens. It's not going to let you down unless you break the focusing like I have. Um, and then I'd get this one later on if it really, really gets serious because this lens is dedicated macro one to five times. It doesn't have a focusing ring. It's more like a zoom ring and then you have to move the camera in and out. So if you come across an insect that's bigger than your sensor, you're not going to get it in the frame. This one, you're going from infinity to two times. It's got a focusing ring on it. You can use it for portraiture as well. So definitely go for the 91st. Right. Um, Zoltan. So any news about Lara releasing a version with auto aperture? No, I don't think they'll tell me when they're going to sort that out. But I can tell you why they can't. It's because they can't reverse engineer the RF mount. It's as simple as that. Same as the um, the Nikon and the Sony. They have to have engineers that can program the lens to work with that camera. And they just haven't got the engineers to do that at the moment. So that's why you're not seeing it. Plus, I mean, uh, what, Sigma. Yeah, Sigma, uh, Tamron, even they can't do RF mounts yet because Canon are just not releasing the mount information. Right, so Emma's here, just got back from Scribbles. No idea what that is. You hear drilling, it's next door. He's still doing his house. <laughs> Yeah, so drone scales, you can't really compare the two timed lenses against anything else because nobody else is offering two times. That's um, that is correct. So if you have, say, a Canon 100mm EF version, this is, that's a one time. So to get the two times, you're never going to put Rhinox on there. You have 1.4 times on the RF version. I haven't used that lens yet because they won't send it me. I also have the Irix 150mm lens here. This is a sweet ass lens, I tell you that now. Um, the build quality is fantastic. And again, that's only one times as well. So if you're wanting two times, you're going to have to go with a lower. Now, have you seen this little guy? This one's the 85mm. So that's the 95 not uh, sorry, the 90mm against the 85mm. So if you're not going for the absolute sharpest, then the 85mm is a very good choice. This is a 5.6 f-stop lens, unlike these ones that are 2.8. Okay. So, um, Bug Bob's Wild Road, he has the MPE 65mm lens. That is a great lens. It's a very hard lens to use, though, unfortunately. Um, but... It is, it's the holy grail of macro lenses, that thing is. Great results from that lens. Uh, is auto aperture any better when used with mirrorless? Um, yeah, basically. Um, with the auto aperture, let me get the 90mm here if we can. I don't think you're going to be able to see it, but let me just see if I can try. So you can see the, the aperture inside there. 
okay that's your aperture blades right there okay ignore my sticky finger marks on it and what happens on a manual lens is you control the f-stop on the dial just there okay so you have to dial it in so let's say we go to f8 and the aperture is closed all the time so that's uh, not letting in that much light now with an auto aperture you dial in your aperture on the camera but your aperture is open until you take the picture and what that results in is uh, with a mirrorless camera if you've got it set up like me i've got it set up so i can see my exposure in my evf um, with the full manual lens in order for the camera to show you what's going on it has to slow down the frames per second in your evf and what that results is in you start getting like this movement so you're moving about and your evf isn't catching up that's why i said in the video that you need to add extra light with an auto aperture lens it's letting as much light in as possible so you don't get that low frame per second in your evf if it's the equivalent of if you've used a dslr when you look through the uh, the ovf it would be dark compared to it being light and you can see or you can't see so it's basically the advantage of having an auto aperture and believe me if laura can figure out the rf mount and bring out let's say a 90 or a 100 mil version 2 that supports auto aperture on mirrorless cameras that is going to be an absolute killer lens it really is oh let's let's put river ceiling on while we're out here as well shall we <clears throat> okay yeah the Sony E mount is open, but they uh, what I've been told is they don't have the engineers to design it. Basically, you still have to have an engineer to design the mechanism in the lens and stuff. I don't know. If that's that's just what they've told me. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Very much. Okay. Dronescapes UK. Yeah. Uh, two times. Uh, I shoot at two times when I'm doing mostly. Uh, jumping spiders anything bigger than jumping spiders it's i'd say half life size to one and a half life size again if you're doing damselflies or dragonflies then you're not even doing macro to be honest with you you're actually further out so the irix lens is a great lens for that this one is uh, has river ceiling the build quality is great it is heavy though it's really heavy that's why you got a tripod color on it but i you i would use that for dragonflies stuff like that the lower lenses jumping spiders things of that nature and then if we get the holy grail use the canon mp for things like ants and stuff like that but let's not forget you can still put a rhinox on the end of these lower lenses as well to get extra magnification i think you can get up to around three times magnification if you put it all together all right cc how are you doing mate so I'm going to see how long this stream will go on for. But um, yeah, let me get this. So I spoke in the video about how the uh, the focusing has broken on it, and it's the same on my 100 mil. So it's just all over the place. It really is. So if you look here now, if I just cover up my face, you'll be able to see what I'm on about. You see that? So it's really loose. Doesn't affect you doing photography. Unfortunately, this one has done the same as well. I don't know if you can see that. But it doesn't affect your photography because generally you use the focusing ring to set your magnification and then you move the camera in and out. But for video, it's, it's annoying for video because you can't you can't get a smooth focus rack with it because it's just constantly you hear that? <laughs> it's just constantly doing that. I I hope that's something they can improve in the future because it'd be really nice uh, to do that. Uh, let's have a look what we got. So if you want to take photos of a butterfly photographer, which lens should I use? Is the lower 100 millimeter good? Richard, it depends on the camera. If you've got a DSLR, 100 mil will do it perfectly. If you've got a mirrorless, the 90 mil would be the one to go for. Okay. 
But I mean, honestly, you can't go wrong adapting the 100mm EF version, which is the auto aperture, to your mirrorless camera. You just can't go wrong. It's it's brilliant. It really is. The only reason I'm switching to the 90mm is because of that stupid front end. You know, that's literally all it is. Yeah, um, drone escapes. Yeah, it would be nice if Blower could rever seal these lenses. So this, yeah, rever sealing, that would be nice. Uh, auto aperture on all mounts, that's Sony, Nikon, um, Canon and the L mount, that would be nice. And also rubber grips on there, like on the Irix. I mean, the Irix, in my opinion, has the best focusing ring. It's got a nice rubber grip. Okay, wait for that focus. It's got a nice rubber grip, but also it's got like this little notch here that you can grab, which is fantastic for focusing, it really is. So, yeah, it would be nice if they could do that. But again, if you're looking for a, a small lens that's lightweight, then obviously you want to go for that bad boy there, which is the 85mm. And of course, if you're on... Um, Micro Four Thirds, they got their 50mm lens, which uh, is again a fantastic lens. So, Zoltan, your 100mm doesn't have that weird issue? Yeah, um, I don't know what it is. Two different lenses, both got the same issue, so I'd say it is a design flaw somewhere. But again, I mean, you've got to talk about the optics when it comes to the lower lenses. The optics are that good. I'm willing to put up with a broken focusing ring because they're just, the optics are so great in it. It's a, they're just brilliant. They really are. Right. If anyone got any more questions about the 90 mil, I will try and answer them for you. But for now, I'm going to show you some images that I've taken on this 90 mil. All right. Bear with me. Okay, so all these images have been taken on the 90mm lens. So this is my, uh, my uh, bee. I found this bee drying off in some flowers in my garden. So I used the 90mm. Uh, this is an F16. So... Yeah, you can get away with F16 on a single frame. The reason I had to do F16 was because the B was moving, the flower was moving. There's no way I was focus stacking that particular image. And you got my uh, little jumping spider that I photographed not a while ago. Uh, again, this is the 90 millimeter. This is at F11, I believe it is. It's the only thing having a manual lens. I can't recall what F stop I've used to photograph them. There's another one. I gotta say that um, that jumping spider is probably my favourite one to photograph. It really is. Just fantastic. So here's the my little sling. This is the Everglades um, sling. This is a Philippines Regis. And some of you viewers out there actually have these spiders wild in your back garden. You're so lucky. We don't get them wild in this country, unfortunately. My Fidipeus Comatus again. I just love his hairs. Again, these are all shot on the 90. Another one of my little sling. Beautiful little spider. And here's an interesting shot. Uh, Lara wanted a really close-up shot of the eye so they could use it in their promotional material. Uh, I stuck um, flowers onto the lens so it would reflect in the eyes. It was an interesting, uh, interesting way of using it. I might do a video of that in the future, but we'll see. And we have a wild zebra jumping spider. These are the wild ones in the UK. And there you go. So yeah, some fantastic images that you can get with this lens. Um, doesn't matter if you're in the studio or outdoors, the, the lens performs brilliantly. So, uh, Hemi Cakes, yeah, the, um, the Canon MPE has auto aperture. So, again, 
a little bit of an added bonus if you're using an auto aperture um, lens. Right. Right, drone scapes. I have seen the new probe lens. Uh, I knew about that last year, to be honest with you. I've used their previous probe lens. That's a great little lens to use, particularly for a video. And fingers crossed, they'll send me that new Perry probe for testing. And um, obviously, I'll let you know then, but I can't comment on a lens I haven't used yet, unfortunately. Right, Sunseen Universe. Great to have you here. Uh, yeah, there might be a slight delay getting you on the live stream. If you don't know, this computer's been playing up lately. It keeps restarting. I don't know why. In fact, as soon as this live stream is finished, I might reinstall and put Windows 10 on. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. So focusing distance on the 90 mm I got about four centimeters out of it, but my rig is completely different to everyone else's. So just bear with me one sec, guys. Right. So yeah, it's um, the focusing is 205 millimeters, but let's bear in mind that is from the end of the lens to the, your camera sensor. At Jesus, that lens is all over the place um a two to one i got around four centimeters but i've got a massive rig on the end of my uh, my my lens so you know depending on what you got on the front of it it'll depend on your working distance but the working distance is basically the same as the 100 mil so it's great it's good Right, um, Mitch, what camera are you using? Let me know what camera you're using. I can tell you which one to get. Okay. It all depends on the camera. If, if you're using mirrorless, I would go 90. If you're on a DSLR, go with a 100mm. But go for the EF version because then you can adapt it to your camera and get uh, advantage of the auto aperture. <laughs> Bug Bob's, yeah, I mean, I'm always experimenting with different things. They asked um, they asked for that picture, and I thought, uh, the example image they sent me, which was someone else's work, uh, it had the flowers in there, and I thought, well, okay, <laughs> you want to jump a spider's eyes with flowers in it, I'll, I'll supply that for you. <laughs> right, Canon 60, 100mm EF version, okay, that's the one I would go for. The 90mm will not fit onto a DSLR. It's for mirrorless only, okay? You could also go with the 60mm, but in my opinion, it's not as good as the 100mm, to be honest with you. So, 100mm all the way for a DSLR. Okay. Yeah, 90, yeah, 90D, uh, 90D. <laughs> the 90mm is for mirrorless, and it will not adapt to DSLRs, whereas if you get the 100mm, particularly the EF version, you can then adapt that to any mirrorless camera. So I don't know if you know this, I'll, I'll tell you anyway, but you can adapt that to a Sony camera if you want to. You can also adapt it to a Nikon if you want to. So, you know, that is another way to go. But it is a bigger lens than the 90mm. And you've got to put up with that stupid thing on the front, okay? <laughs> so bear that in mind. I would suspect at some point they might release a new version of this one. But... Um, I don't think any lens company is going to create lenses for DSLRs anymore. It's all going to be mirrorless, you know. So if you've already got the 90mm, then I can't see the point in them doing a new 100mm lens, to be honest with you. In fact, I'd, I'd actually call the 90mm the replacement for the 100mm. Although it's not officially that. No. <laughs> uh, Bug Bobs, okay, so you saw that image on Lara's website, you thought it was Don Com. No, it's, it's my image. <laughs> well, now that is a fantastic compliment, I must say. <laughs> yeah, so Mitch, yeah, get the 100 mil. I don't think you'll be disappointed with that. So, Hemicakes, yeah, 
with the 90 mil so long as you've got enough light to focus um you should be fine with that okay and um again i'm using the godox lights that they have focusing leds on if you're using a standard flash then most of these big diffusers you can get from macro they all have like leds in that powered by a usb bank so so long as you've got extra light you, sh you can use it at high f uh, isos isos high uh, f stops but again i wouldn't go above f16 on this lens because it does get uh, quite soft so there you go it's a shame that the focusing ring is uh, broken though just let me know anybody out there has got a lower lens with a broken focusing ring or am i just unlucky and got two of them just let me know but it's my job as a youtuber and a reviewer to report on that so just bear that in mind again the 100 mil that has broke the focusing rings broken on it it's already been sent back for repair they sent it back it broke within a couple of months of it coming back but i don't want to send it back because uh, i love these lenses too much i'm always working on them for youtube so i don't want to be without them for too long unfortunately so i won't get them repaired so yeah there you go so if anyone else has any questions i'm just going to keep running this live stream because i want to know if, it, if the computer restarts now if the computer does restart i probably won't be coming back now because i've already covered everything i wanted to cover <coughs> so hemi cake so you have the godox lights too and the pope shield yeah you'll be fine with that then you'll be fine i can go um i can go f16 easy with the focusing leds on the godox and you know it, it's perfectly okay I wouldn't want to do F16 with no extra lighting, though. That's for sure. God, your uh, your fans per second in the EVF they just drop right down, and uh, yeah, it's like um, no, you ever seen a computer game when uh, you haven't got a good good enough graphics? And it's just stuttering. It's literally like that. So Unseen Universe been using the Canon 100mm with the Rayonox attachment for years. Really excited to have an all-in-one lens up to two times. Yeah, um, I'll tell you what, what you'll be amazed right is the image quality. The 100mm from Canon has bad chromatic aberration. You've seen it on um, contrasty areas. If you've tried taking photos or video of a male regal jump inspired, you'll see it in the hairs. The lower, it's non-existent. It's brilliant. And the amount of time it saves me having to not edit images because of the chromatic aberration it's well worth it really is just bear in mind you might need a spare uv filter for the front okay <laughs> how many filters have i gone through now is it free i think i've gone through three filters on this thing because um and let's bear in mind it's mostly because i'm a youtuber as well as a macro photographer if you're a macro photographer you probably won't have any problem with this front end because you'll stick your attachment on your your adapter for your um young new trim macro flash or uh, the go docs or if you need a filter any anything that you're going to attach to the front and you'll probably leave it on there because you've got no need to take it off whereas me being a youtuber i have to test different equipment with the lenses so i have to keep taking it off and currently where is it and currently my uh, my current filter is stuck to a 67 millimeter to 72 millimeter step up ring because i was using it um because i was using it to test some equipment and it just it won't come off <laughs> so that'll be another filter having to order off uh, off amazon i think <laughs> right uh, da, da, da. okay so um someone's got so much nikon glass i'm thinking of jumping to canon uh, so hesitant why would be the reason why you would jump from nikon to canon is there a particular reason or feature you're looking for let me know okay so yeah the old nikon 105 that was an absolutely fantastic lens that was i've only used it once um and that was at a friend's house that is a uh, that is a great lens yeah i've got my 100 mil here and in fact it's it's covered in dust because it just doesn't get used i'll tell you something once you go lower you don't really go back okay 
So, current lineup, I mean, I've got my Irix one here. This is on loan from Irix. Uh, I'll explain why I've got that in a minute. Uh, but I'm going to be using this for dragonflies, damselflies and stuff like that because it's 150 mil. So you've got a longer focus um, distance, long working distance. And the 150 mil length on that lens will obliterate the background. So if it's a messy background, you're not, basically you're not getting messy backgrounds of 150 mil. It'd be nice if it was 200 mil, but yeah, you live with what you got, don't you? But yeah, I'm going to be using that for photographing dragonflies if I ever find one because... So far this year, the wife and I have seen one damselfly. That's it. So I don't know what's going on out there, but I have noticed a massive decline in insects in my particular area. Okay. Okay. Okay, so you're looking for the 6D for Astro. Yeah. Astro is something I don't particularly do. I would love to try it though. Um, I have had talks with the wife about whether I should create a different channel for doing astro photography or not. Uh, I do want to give it a go, but uh, so far I'm just sticking to macro at the moment. So you have silicon sheets in the kitchen to open jars. They also work to remove filters. Yeah. Um, See if you can get me a link to Amazon. Send it over on Twitter if you can, Bob, and I'll take a look at that. At the moment, I'll just, I'll just smash them to get them off now. <laughs> I'm just afraid I'm forgetting them off. So, yeah, Laura. Now, I wouldn't say cheap. Laura, i will say, is budget-friendly, but good quality, okay? Never use cheap. It uh, just doesn't sound right. <laughs> How long have we been going? Half an hour and the computer hasn't restarted yet. Maybe it's fixed. I've done a couple of things. I did some software stuff and it hasn't done yet. Right, okay, so let me talk about the um, the Irix lens and why I have this Irix lens right here. So I haven't mentioned nothing yet um, on social media. But if you go over to the photographer show and come up to talk demos and master classes and then go to the 19th of September and scroll down, you will see here that I am actually going to be doing a macro talk at the photography show uh, this year on behalf of Irix. That is on the 19th of September at 10.30. So with any luck, I will see some of you there. <laughs> okay. If you do go to the talk, then don't be shy. Pop up, say hello, and uh, we'll have a good chat. But I will be at the photography show on behalf of Irix for that talk. And you never know, I might be um, I might be on their stand monging around to irritate people. Mostly to ask them when they're going to come out with a two times lens. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, so that is that is some that is um, one li uh, thing off my bucket list is to do a talk at the photography show. That is happening this year. I'm a little bit nervous about it because I don't have a laptop. I'm having to borrow equipment to get this talk done, which is a bit of a pain in the bum, but Hey, it's happening. It's happening. So there you go. So uh, Bob says he's a registered researcher for the Reston Bumblebee project. He's only seen one bumblebee all year. Coastal Southern California. Yeah, we've noticed it. Um, the Nature Reserve, where I've filmed the last two outdoor videos, including the review. Um, when we first started the channel, and we didn't really do much outdoor work, but I went there. And in this one little spot, you could stand there and count at least five damselflies all around you. Different colours. You've got the, uh, the blue ones, the, uh, the black ones, the uh, black and red. They look really nice. And um, yeah, over the years, they've just declined. And now they've built this massive shopping supermarket thing next to it. And I've got no evidence, but I swear to God that has affected the wildlife in that area. But we'll have to see. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, so Hemi Cakes uh, um, wants to know what jumping spider would you recommend for beginners? Regal jumping spider, all the way. They're so easy to keep, they really are. And you don't need any special heat mats or anything like that. You can get them from most um, places, you know, Facebook groups, uh, retailers. 
uh, depending on what country you're in, of course, you can go outside and catch one if you want one. <laughs> Okay, uh, Okay. so Bob says Sept uh, September 19th is International Talk Like a Pirate Day. Will you give the talk in pirate lingo? No, I won't. <laughs> this, people have a hard time understanding my accent as it is without me having to talk in pirate. Yeah, Unseen Universe, yeah, he's correct. Philippus Regis, Regal Jumpy Spider. Um, minor, minor, I don't know, are they eating or, or what? They're probably just sitting there at the moment, but... Yeah, you've you've seen them on my channel. I don't need to get them out. Incest have had a dramatic decline, which is a result of causing a lot of problems with which impacts everything from crops to green. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's bad. I'm in the middle of a production on a on a um a video at the moment. Uh, it's not about though. It's about crab spiders. I haven't found one yet, <laughs> so I can't finish the video until I find one anyway. But anyway. While looking for crab spiders, we've been you know, making a mental note of where are the butterflies, where are the damselflies, where are the dragonflies, so we can go out early in the morning, like four or five o'clock in the morning, photograph them in the morning dew in natural light, again with the Irix lens for that one. And I'm just not finding any. Now, I went out uh, a couple of weeks ago, I went out early in the morning, and I didn't find anything at all. I mean, unless you like snails and spiders early in the morning, that was about it. So I'm hoping that it'll pick up uh, as, as time goes on. Uh, thank you, Zoltan. So, yeah, hopefully. Hopefully from now on as well. That was the, um, This was the last review video that I've got. That's, um, how can I say it? How can I say it? A freebie? <laughs> it's the last review I'm doing on the channel that's a freebie. From now on, companies have got to pay me to do reviews or I get to keep the gear that they send for review. I have one more review to do. That I officially have to do, which is on this thing here, which is a myop slider for focus stacking. And after that, I'm free to literally just do whatever video I want to do. Um, we're going to be concentrating on outdoor videos up until at least October time, I would say. Basically, when it gets too cold, we'll come indoors and we'll start doing water drops and stuff like that. Uh, so, Hemi Kate says he's in the USA, caught a red belly jumpy spider. Oh man, they're gorgeous, they are. Yeah, uh, Bob's correct there. The rest in the US, um, Fidipeus Audax is the big one. They look very similar to the Regal jumpy spiders, but they're slightly bigger, I think. But yeah, uh, that will be it, I think, from this live stream. How long are we going now? 38 minutes and no restart. See? When I only prep for a 20 minute stream because the computer restarts every 20 odd minutes, it doesn't restart and I've got no content. How typical is that? <laughs> Otherwise I would have more content. I'll tell you what, let's ray these lenses just for fun. Okay, we're going to go with the big boy. This is your big boy that you, you know, you go to school with, you've got a big lad, you know, no one messes with him because if he jumps on you, you're dead. That's the big boy. Okay, so the Irix is 974 grams. That's with the tripod collar. And I do use a tripod collar because it is very heavy. Let's go with the Canon 100mm. Canon 100mm is 655 grams. Let's go with the lower 100mm. It is 662 grams. Ooh. <laughs> Let's go with the 90 mil. 634 grams for that one. Lara 60 mil. Let's have a look at that one. That's 561 grams. And now the smallest one of the bunch is the 85 mil. This is a sweet looking little lens. Let's just have a look at that. That's 302 grams. So there you go. I want to use this more. I want to use this more. Um... Lara sent it me so as I could do a comparison video. Uh, so I'm going to do more photography with that lens because it's uh, I think it's an underestimated lens. OK, so. <clears throat> so Richard is still waiting for an FE mate 150 millimeter macro lens. Um, I'm not telling you how much I weigh because I've put, I've put weight on in case you hadn't noticed. Uh, yeah, 
a nice 150 to 200 mil lens for mirrorless cameras would be nice. I'm going to speak to Laura and Irix to see if there's anything in the works. I seriously doubt they will tell me if there is anything in the works, but at least I can put the interest out there to push them in that direction and say, hey, we want these lenses, okay? <clears throat> uh linus i'm not too sure you're probably best contacting lower support and to find out if you've got a factor in um taxes and customs on top of that i don't know if you have or not what no comment what what are you on about you're sick of me moaning on my videos about what my, my, my right well, yeah, if I'm going to be on a stage at the photography show, I've got to lose that belly. I mean, it looks like I've got a beer belly, except I don't drink I beer. We all have my trousers on, <laughs> yeah, but that's the worst thing. My trousers keep falling down. You well, know, it's, it's too tight. It's, yeah, look, look. Look, I don't know if you can see this. Right? The belly goes above my belt. <laughs> yeah? So, you know, the belly doesn't actually hold my trousers up. So my trousers still fall down, but I've got a beer belly. It's It's ridiculous. I'll tell you what it is. It, it's it's the wife. She keeps buying me things like this, look, to, to munch on while I'm editing. And the review video took me uh, two days to edit. So that's two days of munches. I'm munching on editing those videos. <laughs> no. Okay, yeah, we're doing that. Where you gone? Where you, where you gone? Hey! Oh, why are you doing that? <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing hiding under there for? <laughs> right, I'm back now. No, you're not. <laughs> Go away. Yeah, that ain't gonna happen. Anyway, so. <sighs> yeah, Pringles, they do it every time. I actually, my first belly I got was when I was playing EVE Online and I used to just um, umber mine all day long and just eat Pringles. And ever since then, I've never really been able to get rid of my belly, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't have to open them, but that'd be wasting money, wouldn't it? So <laughs> They're saying that's a different show. <laughs> what? Oh, man, that thing's in the way there. Look. Hello. No, he doesn't want to focus. That thing's in the way. Get lost. Come on, the camera needs to see your face to focus. Stop hiding it. Go away, then. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll get on camera one day. <laughs> I'll see him at the photography show. Ah, you will see her at the photography show because she's got a film behind the scenes video for the channel. So there you go. We'll get her one way or the other. Hey, and you know what? Would you show your face if someone donated £10 to the channel? No. <laughs> well, that was a waste of time trying, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway. All right, 44 minutes, still no crash. So, I don't know. Um, you know, just I'm using my headset instead of the lav mic. I, I basically got it down to the minimum amount to see what was causing the restart. It's not restarting on me at the moment. Maybe if we get Don on the channel for Thursday, it'll restart then. Well, I might just reinstall Windows 10 anyway. I don't know yet. We'll see. Anyway, I'm going to end it there, guys. I think we've had enough uh, fun and games. Um, hook me up on social media if you have any extra questions about the 90 mil or any of the lower lineup, to be honest with you. I've got pretty much most of them. I've even got their 15 mil ultra wide angle lens here as well, which is a. I'd say this one is probably the hardest macro lens I've ever used. It's harder than the MPE 65mm. But well, that's because at one to one, your subject is literally touching the lens. So <laughs> it's a very hard lens to use. Yeah, okay. Let's say, see you later, Mitch. I need to catch one of your live streams soon. Every time you come online, I'm always in bed. So I keep missing them. <clears throat> right then. Yep. So I'm going to call it there. It's been a good test of the computer. It hasn't restarted, which is fantastic. Uh, hopefully I'll be online Thursday nights. We might be talking the 90 mil, I don't know, uh, but we'll 
we'll see what we'll talk about anyway but for now that's it don't forget check me up if you're in the uk check up on the photography show see what uh see about my talk there hopefully i might be hanging around the iwix stand unfortunately lau is not going to be at the photography show this year otherwise i'll be hanging around their stand as well but unfortunately that's not going to happen this year but that is it so again thank you for watching hit me up on social media if you have any extra questions about the 90 mil yes i am going to be keeping that lens if i can officially they haven't given it me to keep but i'm going to try and avoid sending it back by having projects for it so i get to hold on to it uh, but for now that will be it thank you for